everybody. My name is Faye. I'm the founder at Wing Canvas, and I'm here with Jesse, our YouTuber. You've probably joined her on her live streams before. She is our main content creator for our channel. And today I have some very exciting news to share with you. Uh, Jesse is going to be sharing her art portfolio for illustration at OCAD University. And uh, we are so excited to get a really behind the scenes look at her process, uh, as well as some of her pieces that she's making now. So without further ado, I'll let you introduce yourself, Jesse. Yeah, hi. Um, I don't know how much I need to introduce myself. I kind of pour out my soul onto the channel already. Um, but hi, I'm Jesse. I'm currently going to school at OCAD University as an illustration student. Previously, I went to Durham College as a game art student as well. So I have that college and university experience. Um, currently, I do a lot of comic work, a lot of concept work. Um, Actually, I've been doing a lot of fan art recently, but um, yeah, most of the time I do a lot of comic work, especially for my own webcomic. Um, say hello, Grace, and Webtoon. Let's go. Um, let's get us to 15K. <laughs> let's not, anyway, um, but yeah, that's kind of just all I do nowadays. So, Jesse, this is a memory from when you first started at Wing Canvas as a co op student. <laughs> Almost Back three in 2019. Years. Yeah, 2019. Disgusting. <laughs> what a journey it's been from the Oof. physical studio to now completely virtual. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> I remember that photo specifically. My hair is tied up because I hadn't taken a shower. I was like, oh man, you're taking my photo now? All right. <laughs> uh, who needs showers during the lockdown anyway? <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> So uh, now this is Jessie, and she is now an instructor. Um, so Jessie, tell us a little bit about the classes you teach and when you started. Yeah, yeah. So um, currently what I teach um, is art mentorship. Usually it revolves around digital, though they love like just they love getting information. So <laughs> what it really is, is me trickling down the information from post-secondary onto them. Um, so that's art mentorship. I teach cartooning and anime three, so the advanced classes and then digital art three. Um, as well. And then I also teach teen intensives for camps. So I, I've taught illustration, I've taught uh, character design, and I've taught figure drawing. Um, I started teaching, my very first class um, was like a tester back during my co op uh, period. We went to do off sites. Um, so I did an off site class with a bunch of uh, fifth graders. You know, probably not a great idea to teach them <laughs> fifth graders body structure because, you know, they don't like hearing, OK, we're going to draw the skeleton of the person. They're like, skeleton. I'm like, OK, anyway. So that was my very first experience. Um, but then I actually became a proper instructor that summer. So I was hired midway through um, my co-op program. And then in July of 2019, then I started becoming a proper instructor on probation um and then i had my like full proper classes when i hit fall of my college year um so yeah and i've been teaching ever since then i love my students i love teaching it's super super fun um it's probably my favorite aspect <laughs> of this whole job for nice. sure all right so jesse we are going to take people through your actual portfolio examples for illustration Mm -hmm. um, and if you want to check out Jesse's work, you can follow her at television. Uh, and yeah, I'm going to jump into it because I know we've got a lot of pieces. Yes. So uh, <laughs> yes. here we go, starting with figure drawing. Yeah, it was a lot of figure drawing. So that first one was supposed to be 30 minutes. I did it in 10. Um, and my prof was like, my prof was like, I, I mean, it looks good. You can just leave it. Same with the other one. That other one, actually, no, that one was uh, no, that one was 10 minutes. I think I did it in five. And I was like, I'm known for being kind of speedy. So like, she was like, yeah, they look good. That one was uh, five. That one was 10 as well. So it was like, the thing with figure drawing, this these were from my time in game art. Um, the thing with figure drawing there is they didn't focus on accuracy. They focused on stylization. So they were like, if you can take the figure and make it interesting, that's what they want to see. So it wasn't necessarily of taking it from life. It was more like, okay, you're going to see this thing in front of you. I want to see how you can make it more fun. And that was a lot of what game art was, which is very different from what I am right now, um, especially with the life drawing that I'm in now. <laughs> it's very, very different. Interesting. Okay. 
some personal pieces? Yeah, so these were two of the ones that I did for the portfolio. Well, one of them was for the portfolio. The other one I did on my own. Um, the one on the left uh, was called Think of the Kids. Um, on that day in particular, I was very mad about gun violence. I was like, I had just, I think there was a, a shooting had just happened. I was really, really upset about it. And a really big thing that a lot of people like to argue is think of the kids. And you know what? If we're not thinking about the kids a lot of the time, you know, it's like, so I kind of like that juxtaposition of drawing like a child who's smoking with the gun, right? Being completely uncalled for like i didn't even add in the background i wanted them to look as alone in this space as possible so it was like i really wanted to heighten that feeling of like a really jarring piece in front of you fun fact that uh gun alone took three hours so <laughs> i'm very bad at artillery so it was like just working with reference by reference um the one on the right isn't necessarily like super super deep um that one was called angels aren't beautiful and that one is based more off of the history of like i love studying um angelology a lot of that kind of um semi-religious uh, sort of um imagery and a lot of the times you hear about angels and like you see them in pieces and they're beautiful but the thing is is that they're usually not um you hear about the, especially different passages in the bible and other things you hear like these about these terrifying monsters and that's really what angels look like so i kind of wanted to play around with that idea myself wow very cool and these are both digital yes both digital nice uh, yes. <laughs> so these are um, some pages from the Instagram run of Say Hello Grayson. Currently it's in a rewrite, redraw. Um, so this was like around the first run of it on Instagram. So that's why all the pages are like, oh, I think it was like a five by seven ratio. It was very, or very close to a, just a square ratio um, because that's what Instagram allowed for. Um, this comic is what told me to get out of game art. Um, a lot of my, like, I had been doing a lot of stuff in game art. My uh, my GPA was high as heck, right? Um, it was easy. It was nice. But the thing is, is that, like, I think while in that program, I had been doing this comic, um, at first on a whim and now, like, more seriously, um, it told me that I want to do something with illustration. I am not a game artist. It's like, I prefer working with comics. I love telling stories. I've been drawing comics since I was like six. I found some of my comics from 2008. Like, no joke. <laughs> They're in my drawer. Um, but yeah, that's what this comic taught me. It taught me how much I loved color. It taught me how much I loved illustration. It taught me how much I loved comics and making these weird compositions and writing stories that are like somewhat dramatic, but like... Um, I learned that I'm a playful artist. That's what a lot of my profs are like. They're like, you don't take a lot of, one of my profs straight up said to me, he was like, you don't take a lot of things seriously, do you? And I kind of sat there and I'm like, you're right. <laughs> I was like, I don't. Um, and like, I think that's fun. I think it's like a lot of my work. I just try to have fun. Like I have those serious things like these two pages. Um, actually the one on the left leads into a not so serious section. Um, cause then he learns that she loves anime, but yeah, but you, you also are a big fan of horror, which I, I can, <laughs> which you'll see in a little bit. Yes. Um, but uh, yeah, I can see in your portfolio, you have a lot of comics and storytelling. So definitely something that feels very natural. And just so we, we all know, if when Jessie says she's not serious about art, she draws every single day. I do. I and was drawing I, 10 minutes before this. <laughs> If I know anybody who draws every single day, if you want to get really good, you got to be drawing every day. Uh, like Jessie, like Jessie was drawing. I, every time I'm talking to her, she's drawing. So it's true. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So these, these are intriguing. What are these? Yes. We're getting into my concept work. So this was what I did again in college. Um, uh, this is for, from pre-production. So um what I loved pre-production, it was 100% my favorite class and my grades reflected it. I never dropped below a 99. Um, so uh, all of my assignments were literally, he gave us a page. It was a page and it was a, um, oh my God, what's the word? It's the, it was a pitch. He gave us a page of a pitch um, and he was like, okay, your page, that's your assignment. That's all you get. And you have to come up with minimum five thumbnails and then you have to make a whole background based off of it. That was all our assignments. Um, 
It was just to give us practice and tell us like, okay, um, you got to get your brain rolling. Because a lot of the times in the game art industry, you don't get a lot to work with. They go like, sometimes they'll just tell you like, I got a vision, bro. I got a vision. And they'll give you like a palette and they'll go, okay, go. A palette and a, <laughs> a palette and a genre. And you're just sitting there like, okay. Um, but yeah, so then that ended up being my favorite. Um, really, when I went to go for feedback, he was like, I mean, these are beautiful. He's like, you can go with whatever you want, but I do like this one. I was like, okay. So I'd always just go with what he wanted. Um, so then this one, uh, the fairy ghetto was what he called it. He was like, where do the fairies go in the middle of the night? Maybe they're not all so beautiful and perfect all the time. Um, I love that concept. Um, but yeah, I thought if it was like an old abandoned library, some kids stumble upon some smoking fairies who had like the, the cups of <laughs> crumpled paper with like the, the trash fires, you know, I thought that'd be kind of fun. Ah, the inventor's fair. This was the final assignment that I did before dropping out. Um, I hated this piece. I really did. I hated these thumbnails. I had no ideas. You can see how similar a lot of the thumbnails are. It's because I had zero ideas. I didn't have any inspiration. Um, that's because this assignment was A, started in March of 2020. <laughs> so the height of the pandemic. And then I had to finish it in April of 2020. And a lot of things happened in April. It was like not a great place for me. Um, so like, not only did I not want to do it, I was also just out of ideas. I hate the final so much. I hate this piece. <laughs> um, it was one of my first time. Like, this one was a two point perspective piece. The second vanishing point is super, super far off to the side. Um, but yeah, he was like, he was like, oh, I love this piece. I'm like, do you? I hate this. <laughs> it was like, it was not atmospheric enough for me. I think I could have like looking back on it now, it was more and more like proficiency with perspective. I think I could have pushed the vanishing points more, made it three point instead. Um, so you can really get that height in there. Um, the people are done wrong. I'm looking at them right now. I'm like, that's not correct. <laughs> you know what? It, um, it's so, if, if, if you're listening to this and you're saying, oh my gosh, she hate, how can you hate this? This is so good. You know, we are our own worst critic. So yes. one thing I've learned about portfolios is just because you don't like it doesn't mean other people won't. And just because something's your favorite doesn't mean other people will like it. Mm -hmm. That's kind of challenging, a very challenging part of portfolios in general. I am also stupidly harsh on myself, so <laughs> that's another thing. Uh, yeah, I'm sure you all noticed that there was not a lot of traditional work <laughs> in this portfolio because um, we weren't required to work traditionally in my old college. Um, but this one is traditional. So this was done in gouache i believe it's 14 by 11 but i think i cut it down so it's more like 9 by 11 9 by 14. um this piece is called self-defense so uh, again i was a lot of these pieces this entire portfolio i was not in a good <clears throat> i was not in a good headspace this piece especially i was not in a good headspace um and the entire like the entire meaning behind this piece can be summarized in you got to get over yourself and it was like um kind of the idea like the middle is like a self-portrait ish <laughs> of like you know me and this like different versions of me off to the side um and a lot of it is like you gotta sometimes your worst enemy is yourself and it's not like you're gonna have to get over yourself once it's gonna be over and over and over again it's self-defense you're defending against yourself and you're also defending yourself you know so it's like you kind of it's good to feel emotions. It's good to understand what you're doing, but you also need to learn that sometimes you're stupid and your brain thinks the dumb things. So you need to get over it, right? Um, so this one was a little bit more serious in terms of my work. Um, it also took a lot longer because as much as I love gouache, I am very slow with traditional work nowadays. Um, but yeah, no, this was a fun one, all in all. <laughs> ah, this one was personal. This one was just a personal thing. So I love writing. I love creating characters and fun stuff. Um, chicken is in quotations because they're not chickens that and that is in this coop. It's a. I decided because I have these little creatures from a different universe that are kind of like they have a chicken equivalent that aren't really chickens, but they they kind of there's meant to be like chickens, right? So I was like talking to my friend about it, uh, my best friend, a uh, fellow co-op student previously, Ray, um, and I was like, <laughs> I was like, I want to create a chicken coop. And she's like, why? And I'm like, I want to, I want to make one for those like little chicken creatures. And she's like, go for it. She's like, wouldn't it be funny if it was like really high end and kind of like an apartment? And I was like, that is funny. So I just kind of went with that. Um, so this one was a three point perspective piece. I love working in these cubic kind of isometric areas. And I was really inspired by a lot of those like cubic isometric um, background concepts. So I wanted to try it out for myself. Um, 
Oh, but yeah, that cool. was most of these ones. This one is schoolwork. Um, so this one, uh, again, pre-production, he plopped an idea down in front of us. This one was literally just make a weapon. That was basically all it said on the page. There was some other stuff in there. I like the deliverables, but he was like, you're going to make a weapon. You're going to make a firearm. I was like, okay. So the thing with me is there, I love doing a lot of things. There's very few that I hate doing. Um, one of them though was firearms. I hate drawing firearms. I hate drawing, um, like vehicles. So we had to design a motorcycle as well. Um, but <laughs> the thing is though, is that if I have to do something that I hate, I will make it fun for myself somehow. Um, it's like, okay, you need to figure out a way to make you want to work on this. So a lot of my work from school has been inspired by, um, ancient Mexico. So, um, I love ancient Mexico. I love the Aztecs and all that. So I was like, okay, I think I'm going to do that. So I, it's not pictured here, but we had to make an entire page of just references and pulled out. And he was like, what are you going to do with all these Mayan statues? And I'm like, don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. And he's like, okay, I trust you. Um, so I pulled up all these guns. We had to do 10 silhouettes. We had to do um, two, one orthographic drawing, two in perspective, and then we had to paint one. Um, we were allowed to leave it in black and white or actually paint it out. I decided to leave it in black and white for the aesthetic or whatever. Um, I got a hundred on this one. <laughs> um, wow. He loved this one. Um, but yeah, no. So it was like, I took like inspiration from Quetzalcoatl. Um, who is one of the um, Aztec gods. Um, and I really wanted to create Ida de Dios, I believe is the... Uh, what does that translate to? I don't remember. I, it's been years. Um, I think it was like the wrath of God or something. I think that's something what it was. Um, but yeah, it was like a mini gun. So I love big guns. So I was like, I wanted to make something kind of big with a chain. Cool. Um, but yeah. This is a concept for a friend's video game. Um, so back in game art, we had uh, a group of our friends. We were like, Hey, let's make a video game. Let's just do it. And I was like, I'm sitting there, the reasonable one of my friends, which is not saying much. I'm not very reasonable, but like compared to my other friends, I was the reasonable one. Um, and I was like, are we going to have time to work on this video game? And they're like, yeah, we did not have the time to work on this video game. So, um, but they, I ended up being one of the lead concept artists. So they would kind of give me the ideas and I'd go, okay. I'd go off for a day. I'd kind of come back and I'm like, Hey, how's this look? Um, so this is one of them. We just wanted to make like kind of a fantasy sci-fi sort of thing. Um, for any of you who play video games, very similar to Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, and I was like, they were like, we want to make like elemental kind of elders for each diff, each section. I was like, okay. Um, and they're like, we kind of have an idea. We don't really have huge ideas for any of them, but like, if you could start on one, that'd be great. And I was like, cool. Um, so the only one that I really, really finished was the earth elder. Um, so this one gave, gave me a lot of practice with foliage. I think I did this entire piece in like half an hour. Um, what? it was just, wow. like, yeah. So it was like, when I'm into something, I'm into something. It's like, if I have this, like a height of inspiration, like you think I'm fast, you haven't seen me work when I'm at the height of my inspiration. It's like, I can, I can do a full portrait in like less than an hour, <laughs> but like, yeah. So it's like. I'm sure some of the people who've seen you live stream <laughs> think you're super fast, but like as all artists, we don't always have that groove, right? Yeah, sometimes, absolutely. Yeah, sometimes things just take a lot longer and knowing when you're creative is really helpful. Ah, this is a fun one. So I am known for having very vivid dreams. Um, I have an entire section on my phone where I just save, like, sometimes I'll wake up and I'm like, I text Rachel immediately. I'm like, yo, I had the weirdest dream. And I'll, I'll text her for like a half hour straight of just me talking about what I dreamed about. Um, sometimes I just write them down somewhere. I have a journal where I kept my dreams for a while. Um, so this is a, a screenshot from my dream. So what I had a, that dream was like, I was in like an abandoned mall with my dad and my brother and suddenly stuff started to feel really off and we were like we have to go we have to go so we start running and suddenly all of these animatronic arms start coming out of the walls and like so we hear like this clanking behind us as we're running and we get to the staircase i always like to compare it to um like the like the Millican Center. I like nobody will know where that is. But um I like to kind of compare it to like oh like a, if you're in like a like a public pool 
and like you're going up the stairs there and it's like attached to a library like the community center i kind of like to it's kind of looked like that like going up the staircase with these glass tiles and i started to go in there uh to go up the stairs and in the back and then this giant animatronic peeked out smiles at me it cocks its head and i'm like okay so i run away from that too and that was so like harshly ingrained in my brain i'm like i have to draw that i have to draw that so after watching frozen 2 with my family i listened to i listened to the frozen 2 soundtrack while i was drawing this piece it took me about an hour and a half and i was like i sent it off i'm like yo i love this piece i was like yo this is so out atmospheric i've never done something like this before and this was an assignment so this one was called the file name is it i think it's the prophet yeah the prophet um we were just told to create a background that's it we were told to have a main focal point you're gonna make a map you're gonna make a painting and i was like okay um he's like you gotta be atmospheric it's gotta have a background of some kind um i liked this one somewhat um i liked the way i did the prophet i liked the face um, and my idea was that it was this cave lost to time in the middle of nowhere. Um, and you'd have to go on this huge adventure to find him. And if you find him, um, and if you're deemed worthy, then he'll present you with a wish. Or he'll present you with your future. Um, so that was kind of what I wanted to go for. Why the mask? I have no clue. I just wanted to... It, the thing with game art is, like, if it looks cool, it looks cool. And you can go with it. <laughs> um, um, the thing I struggled with the most was the water. I don't think it looks like water. Not at all. Um, but... Yeah, this one was fun. The perspective's off, but I think I just had fun with it. And that was like one of my, why I used it. <laughs> so, so Jesse, I know a lot of your artwork came from your previous program uh, in yes. game art, but uh, I know some of us and some of us watching uh, don't have that luxury of getting mm. somebody to push you. So is there any, uh, any tips for people who are doing this completely on their own? Yeah, absolutely. Um, obviously, I didn't have any of that previous work to get into game art. <laughs> um, to get in there, it was it was very similar to the OCAD pro portfolio in terms of it being very open-ended. There were like maybe three things that were required and then like the rest was up to you. Um, a lot of it was mostly finding ways to entertain yourself with your artwork. I think that's something that a lot of people struggle with because they, when I see a lot of artists, they're like, I don't know if this work is like good enough for my portfolio. And like, I'm, tr I'm trying to do this, but like, I hate doing it. And I'm like, then make it fun for yourself. That's like the biggest thing. It's like my work. I, I look back at my game art portfolio. I hate that thing. Actually, no, there's one piece I still really love. Um, Karen's chicken strips. That was a game concept I had. A survival game concept I had. It's the dumbest idea ever. Um, but I love that. Every once in a while, I'll come back. I'm like, I'm going to draw a Karen's chicken strip piece. Um, but... <laughs> Yeah, you got to find a way to make it fun for yourself. That's really it. Good advice. Uh, and your friends seem like they help you a lot with that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we are going to see a video walkthrough of Jesse's sketchbook and yeah. um, hoping to learn a little bit more about your process and what, it, what goes in a sketchbook. What are some of the things that... Oops, I'm going to start that from the beginning. What are some of the things, you know, that you should put in a sketchbook versus things that you shouldn't? Um, I think the number one thing uh, that you shouldn't put in a sketchbook is unfortunately fan art. That was the number one thing I like tried to avoid <laughs> when I was going through this sketchbook. Um, but the thing with sketchbooks is you want to put your thoughts in there. You want to put in notes. You want to put in like doodles that you've done. You want to put in things that you're thinking about. Right. You want to experiment. You want to use a bunch of different mediums. Um, I used watercolor in the sketchbook. I've never done that before. So it was a lot of watercolor. There was some paint markers. There was some Posca um, pen. There was pencil. There was um, original characters. There was observational. Um, right. Sometimes there were full illustrations. Oh, that one I I used charcoal and I stamped my thumb and I started drawing. Um, some were full page spreads. Some were just doodles on either side of the page. Um, but really, I always find that the messier the sketchbook is, the better it is. As time, oh, you can also copy paste stuff in there to show that you're using reference. Um, as the as the pages go on, you notice me kind of losing my mind um, as it goes on. Because um, at one point, it was just I was just like, okay, yeah, sure, I'm just gonna draw whatever comes to my brain. Um, but yeah, put in some studies. Make sure that you're pushing yourself make sure that you're doing something wild never leave a page blank 
I left two blank directly in the beginning. That's not a good idea. <laughs> I have this weird thing where like I need to make sure that every page has a theme or else I won't finish it. So like those first two pages had themes that I couldn't finish and I didn't want to finish so I didn't. Um, not a good idea. Oh yeah, that was daily comic. Uh, that was um, 24 hour comic day. Um, but yep. Oyasumi. Good night in Japanese. But yeah, that like my whole sketchbook was mostly just like my brain vomit <laughs> in, a, in a sketchbook. Um, and using 20 times more material than I normally would. It would like my normal sketchbooks would at the time would be just pencil and pen maybe, but like never and like 20 uh, like tons of fan art. But I was like, I was like, I should probably focus on this one. That's a good idea. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I know I've looked at a lot of sketchbooks and what really sticks out is your is your personality. So if you want to be memorable, you know, don't just draw what everyone else is drawing, draw what is, you know, what what is really meaningful to you. The other thing I see um, are sketchbooks with like perfect drawings on every single yes. page. Don't do that. That's not a sketchbook. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> that is not you a see sketchbook. see this a lot on Instagram. Don't yeah. do that. Um, so a sketchbook should be a messy collection of thoughts, right? And, mm -hmm. um, you know, now that you've seen kind of Jessie and Jessie's thought process, she probably has a ton of uh, sketches that are not shown that are digital. Um, yes. But were you allowed to include your digital sketchbook? No. So our sketchbook had to be traditional um, for illustration. For, um, for game art, it didn't matter. When I was handing in the stuff, they're like, yeah, you got sketchbooks. Sometimes it's digital. Hand it in. All right. Um, for game art, it was, I believe, five pages of your sketchbook minimum. Um, I think I handed in six. Um, <laughs> but um, I, they were traditional because I still had a traditional sketchbook at that point. Nowadays, I straight up don't. I, I bring around a Microsoft Surface and I sketch on Photoshop when I can. Um, <laughs> though I do have a tiny sketchbook that's traditional that I can fit in my purses. Um, but again, I only do it if I have to. I am very, I'm a very heavy digital artist now. I never used to be. Um, but yeah, it, it depends on your program. Uh, for illustration at OCAD, no, they won't allow it uh, digitally. It has to be traditional. So what, tell us what happened uh, with your portfolio because mm. you applied during the lockdown mm. and you got waitlisted. What? Yeah. That is so one. hard to believe because your work is so strong. And I, I know personally, I've seen you do so much work that it, and it just completely blew my mind. So tell us a little bit about how you dealt with that um, and what you were thinking throughout that process. Yeah, I, I kind of submitted my thing maybe two days before it was due. I was like, okay, it's in. Uh, I got a notification maybe like a month later and they were like, uh, we're gonna put you on a wait list. Um, so it's not a, it's not a yes, but it's not a definite no either. And in my brain, I'm like, oh yeah, that's a no. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's, that's a no. So I told my friends, I'm like, yo, I got waitlisted. And they're like, oh my God, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I'm fine. I think I sulked about it for maybe two days. And then like, after that, I was like, hmm. I'm like, what if I just don't go back to school? My mom hated that idea. My dad, a <laughs> photographer was like, they don't care about the fact that you have a degree. A lot of the times it's just like, you need a portfolio, you're good. My mom was like, no, but you should have a degree so you can like have a, open your stuff, and some more, open up some more things. My mom's a legal assistant. So not necessarily on the artsy <laughs> side of my family. Um, but yeah, so like a lot of the times it was just a lot of like back and forth with that. And then like the last month that they could confirm with me whether it was a yes or no, they were like, or like a week before I had to say yes or no. They were like, hey, you're in the program now. I was like, I'm what? <laughs> By that point, I'd made my peace. I was like, okay, I'm not gonna go back to school. I'm just gonna not do anything. And then they were like, yeah, you're in. I was like, <laughs> I was like, okay. And then it was a very confusing couple of days. Cause like, at first I was like, I'm not gonna go back. I don't think I will. And then I went to Toronto. With some friends and i kind of looked around the city i'm like okay it'd be kind of fun to learn here so i went back and now i'm back and i am back in school and i forgot the uh agony of uh being a student but it's okay <laughs> we're alive oh yeah all right so <laughs> now that you're in school yes. uh jesse has um agreed to show us some of the work that she's doing in her illustration program 
Um, so we're just going to quickly go through that. Uh, I'd love to hear, and I'm sure many students uh, and, and illustration hopefuls uh, want to kind of see a little bit about the program. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Back <Yeah>. to basics. <laughs> yes, it's very, the thing with first year is um, so far, yes, it's been more up my alley compared to game art, but I've been very bored. <laughs> it is a lot of studying, going very hard back to the basics. I had three classes that taught me about composition that I had taught five times before. <laughs> and I was like, okay, <laughs> I'm like, all right. Um, so a lot of it was that. There's a lot of still lives. That still life, I'm sitting there working on it. And I was like, I haven't drawn a still life in four years or like six years. It's been six years. I was like, I haven't done a still life in six <laughs> years. I got a 90. Um, but it was like, I'm like, man, I haven't done anything observational in so long. So it's just a lot of those back to the basics. Um, but there's also illustrative concepts. Um, so you get to kind of explore, you get to kind of be more free, you get to kind of, but you gotta, you gotta, the one thing they push is like, but what's it mean? What's it mean? So it's like, I don't do that a lot with my work. Um, yeah, we had, we had to do uh, 40 thumbnails for that piece 40 <laughs> wow guess who did them in a night um, <laughs> i submitted it i did pretty well on that piece too <laughs> i think i think i got like a 92 on that one um but yeah um yeah this is traditional actually um so these were that was done in uh posca paint marker um so not only will they challenge you to work in different mediums, they'll also challenge you to work in different art styles. Um, this one in particular, he was like, you're not allowed to add detail. You're allowed to use black, white, one other color, and you're going to make iconography. You're not allowed to make add detail. I was like, cool. Um, <laughs> somebody who relies on a lot of detail. I was like, okay. Um, I don't know what I got. I don't think he gave feedback yet. Um, but yeah, this one... Oh, these are this was the thumbnails for a different piece that's coming up. Um, same same project theme, yeah. So this was um, for the Stop Asian Hate Movement. We were supposed to choose something that happened recently and like make a piece about it. And I got myself angry reading uh, some some news headlines, and I was like, "All right, I'm ready to go." And he was <laughs> like, "You're gonna have to make it." He's like, "This piece in particular, you have to make." There was two, uh, but I like this one a little bit more. He was like, "Yeah, this piece in particular, you're not allowed to make it literal. It has to be very, very interpretive." And I was like, "Okay." He's like, "You can work with surrealism too," and I was like, "Okay." So like, I love surrealism, so I was like, "Okay." So, um, but I had fun that with that. Very cool. These, these are awesome. Um, definitely very idea heavy. And that's, that's one thing like you, you had to submit little blurbs uh, that like we've, we've heard Jesse talk about her pieces. But yes. when an adjudicator looks at your portfolio, they have no idea what is in your head. Mm -hmm. So um, what is the importance of actually telling people or, or, or writing captions for your work? And how did you go about doing that? Yeah, so that's called an artist statement. Um, a lot of the times, if you go into a gallery, right, you go into the contemporary art section, you see a big red square on the on the wall, and you're like, what the heck is that? <laughs> and you're like, I could do that. The thing is, no, you can't. Um, the the thing it'll you when you're in a gallery you don't get those artist statements um you don't understand what the art what's going through the artist's head right it can be as simple as like a line on a piece of paper whatever um i saw a piece that was like five nails nailed into the wall uh, i think it's called hangman or something it was kind of funny um but the thing with the artist statement is it gives you an idea of what the artist's thinking you're not going to be able to know what to think without them telling you, right? You can hand in this thing, it can look hideous, it can look beautiful, but if you don't know what there's going through their brain, then like you can't really judge that, right? Because art is so subjective that like you need to have something there in order for you to judge it in another way, you know, give critique on it, realize it's like see what ideas they have running around in that um, weird brain of theirs. So, you know, you kind of need that artistic, that artist statement in order to understand what is going on. Um, same thing with my portfolio. So how long were those statements? Because when some of when we think about an artist statement, some of us just seize up, we just don't know what to write in particular, because you know, you're a writer. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, I have some writing experience. But for a lot of people, especially coming right out of high school, it's very hard. Uh, like, you know, I, I, I tell a lot of people just write one sentence. If you can summarize the meaning of your artwork and you don't have to summarize everything, just like add a little bit of context so that there's intrigue. Just give me a little bit of context so I can understand it. Uh, mm -hmm. How long would you say your artist statements were? 
we were only allowed to have a max of 250 words. So they had to be under 250 words for each one. Um, not hard for a lot of them. Some of them, it was like, uh, like the, the self-defense one. I was like, how am I going to fit that into 250 <laughs> words? Like the, they, like the, the background pieces I was like, yeah, yeah, I can do that in like 10 words if I wanted to. Um, but yeah, we were only allowed 250 words. So it's really not a crazy, crazy amount. I don't, I don't think there's any college or university that's like, you got to write paragraphs. It's very much like a in paragraph. In a tweet. Yeah, yeah, a tweet. Yeah, yeah. that's about Describe right, actually. Yeah. your artwork in a tweet. Basically. Okay, so I know uh, we, ah. uh, <laughs> we're on, we are now at the portfolio advice section. So if, uh, Jesse, what would your present self advise your past self uh, about portfolios? And what advice can you give all of the people who are watching this who are you know, it, it, who are stressed out about their portfolio, uh, we would love to hear your tips. Yeah, number one, uh, number one, you always hear from people, it's like, when you're on your portfolio, you gotta be yourself. I hate to break it to you, buddy. Unfortunately, you really shouldn't. <laughs> Sometimes it's it's good to be yourself, but you gotta be mindful of what the school wants, right? Um, unfortunately for me, looking back, a lot of my current, like my work at the time, getting into OCAD was not what the school wanted. Um, game art is very different compared to illustration. With game art, um, yes, you can have meaning behind your work. Yes, you can have ideas behind your work, but it's very rarely like, this symbolizes blah, blah, blah. It's very, very literal. So a lot of game art, you gotta make those connections immediately because it has to be um, visual storytelling that happens immediately to a very common audience, right? A common audience won't know that the meaning of like, a lily symbolizes like blah, 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 whatever, right? All that fun jazz. Um, but like, it's good to show off your personality. It's good to show off who you are as an artist. But this might sound harsh, um, but if you find that your work doesn't align with what this college or university wants, then you may want to reconsider where you're going. Um, just because like, if you find that this school focuses very heavily on interpretive work and like is very fine arts heavy, you're not a very fine arts person. I see a lot of my classmates who are not very fine arts heavy people um, and they struggle like crazy. Um, I'm not very fine arts heavy either, but I can fake it. So it's like, you know, um, so you need to, you need to kind of understand what you want. Um, and you got to align that with what the school wants as well, unfortunately. <laughs> okay. Uh, and tip number two, I'm going to put it up here. Yeah, not all advice is good advice. Don't only go to your friends. I have wonderful, beautiful, lovely friends that I love dearly and would, and, um, I was going to say something, but I probably shouldn't. Um, <laughs> but I have wonderful, beautiful, lovely friends who are mostly artists as well. Um, and a lot of the times they'll always go, oh, yeah, it's beautiful. It's great. Um, great friends will always give you critique. And a lot of my friends love to give me critique. Um, but sometimes they're wrong. Sometimes a lot of people can be wrong. Art is very subjective, right? Um, giving advice for art is tough because they're not always right. Sometimes it's like, you know, like, because especially with your adjudicators, they might want a certain type of art that your friend does, that your friend uh, likes, but they don't right so it is very much like you got to go to a bunch of different people um and don't include all of it sometimes just the advice that you get you don't need it so be it you, if they told you you go all right and then you just ignore it that happens um but yeah don't only go to your friends because your friends are most likely going to be nice about it um not everybody will be so sometimes you need that uh you know so <laughs> especially within your work so uh lord knows i need it um but yeah that's number two so looking looking back, who would you have gone to for advice? Probably you. <laughs> Probably you. My uh, my past art teachers as well. Um, maybe my dad, because my dad is very um, heavy in that side as well. You didn't show your dad your portfolio. I didn't show anybody oh, my portfolio. Oh, Jesse. I think I showed. I think I showed Rachel after I handed it in. Oh, I was like, no. I, I hated my portfolio. Like, like I hated my portfolio. But I handed it in because I was like, you know, bad. Like again, I was in like a bad space. Not an excuse, but regardless, um, like I handed. I didn't show anybody. I was like, yeah, I'm handing it in. I'm done. I don't care. <laughs> it's like if I don't get it, I don't get in. So be it. <laughs> so apathetic at that point. Um, but yeah, don't only go to your friends. Go to somebody. 
don't don't do what I did. Go to somebody. If it's like your friends, that's better than nobody. But don't only go to your friends. Well, I just saw Jesse's portfolio today. And <laughs> while we were preparing the slideshow, I was like moving things around, putting things that were colorful in between the black and white stuff. So uh, definitely like if you know somebody uh, who can mentor you, somebody who has looked at portfolios uh, or a creative professional, those uh, people can really give you good advice. But again, not all advice is good advice. Um, I've had excellent advice from five-year-olds and terrible advice <laughs> from, you know, uh, friends. So, you know, it, it, how, how do you know whether or not it's good advice? Well, probably go, go to, go to a professional. That's prob you know, don't go to five-year-olds. I'm just saying that yeah. sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, you know, showing it to somebody who doesn't know art can give you a very, very, uh, you know, good reaction or um, something that you don't really expect. Yeah, for sure. Okay. And tip number three. Yeah. So <laughs> funny story. Um, I met the requirements. Don't worry. Um, Reread re them. Reread them a bunch of times. I almost handed in my portfolio without statements on four of my pieces. I went through them again. It was like, I reread the requirements. I was like, okay, cool. And I was about to hand it in. Because like, once you hand it in, you're not allowed to edit it again. It's done. When it's done, it's done. So I looked through my portfolio, like, I maybe like, uh, for, I checked it three times. And I was like, ah, I'll check it a fourth time. Why not? I don't think anything's wrong. I saw that four of my pieces did not have artist statements. And I was Oof. like, oh, <laughs> so I went back in, wrote them real quick. It was due in like a couple days after that, but... So I had time, but I was like, oh no. So I, I wrote them real quick and then handed it in. Um, so yeah, reread the requirements, check your portfolio. Um, when I reread the requirements, I like realized that a lot of my pieces were very digital heavy. At that point it was too late. Um, but I, I was like, mm, I should have included more traditional work because I know OCAD likes their traditionals. <laughs> I was like, but you haven't touched your traditional work in like a year. So I was like, okay um but yeah might be yeah reread the requirements have them saved i have a folder that's literally called really really important and it has like it has like documents it has like um like school requirements it's all that fun jazz there's contracts whatever in there but there's a folder in there that's literally just like portfolio requirements and there's like all the documents in there that i reread i would reread them like maybe once a day <laughs> and i would make sure that i had those things memorized like i can memorize stuff in like the first read but i wanted that thing word for word at that point um but like i don't remember it now i blocked well, out of my memory but you know yeah. That's a good tip because like if you were applying to more than just one program, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, how, do you, you applied just to one program, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So Jessie put all her eggs in one basket, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was easy for her to read the, you know, to reread the requirements. But if you were applying for three or more programs, I wouldn't, personally, I wouldn't apply for more than three because it just becomes super chaotic and you might feel very overwhelmed. Um, but though and every single every single program has a different requirement. So knowing which is which, especially when it's like three in the morning and you're super tired, um, reading them every day is a really good tip. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. well, thank you so much, Jesse. Um, if you want to uh, join our, our art nerd community, we have a growing community on Discord and we have some uh, portfolio channels there. Jesse's very active in the community. Um, I love seeing the the artwork that people are sharing. So if you are a portfolio student, you are not alone. <laughs> um, there is uh, definitely uh, a very friendly community out there who can give you advice um, or who can just give you some general feedback, you know, if you're not sure about something. So the link is in the description. Uh, be, be sure to join and we can continue the conversation. Um, and also we are doing some live critiques on YouTube. So uh, I will let you know the dates, but this is portfolio season. We, uh, we do critiques and programs every year. So you can submit your portfolio for a free live critique on YouTube. And the link is in the description. 
So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Jesse, for sharing your story and giving us a yeah. really true behind the scenes look. And I hope if you're a portfolio student that you are not, uh, that you feel pretty good now that you've seen and uh, heard Jesse's personal stories. Um, and we will see you next time. Yeah. See you next time. Bye. Au revoir.